Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on Shanshan.co and screen reads on ShanshanActing.com. Today we're going to review Cry Macho. So this is directed by Clint Eastwood. He also stars in the film. Uh, time is an hour and 44 minutes, so right around the sweet spot of hour and a half that I like. Uh, actors are Clint Eastwood, plays Mike Milo, kind of this broken, retired cowboy. Dwight Yoakam plays Howard Polk. Garcia Garcia Rojas plays Aurelio. Ivan Hernandez plays Lucas. Lincoln A. Castellanos plays Safiro. Eduardo Minet plays Rafo, the young boy. Fernanda Rejola plays Leta, the kind of spicy, hot mother. Natalia Traven plays Marta, this barkeep. So it's a story of this broken, retired cowboy. At the end of his career, he's kind of all used up because he kind of threw out his back in his terrible rodeo accident. So he really wasn't able to do his job correctly and was kind of this broken cowboy after that. So he gets fired and then his boss calls him up a year later and is like, hey, I need you to kind of retrieve my boy in Mexico. Can you do me a favor? I'll pay you for it. Then we'll be even for the money you owe me. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. So he's kind of strong armed a little bit into it. And so his role is to go down to Mexico, find this young kid of this rancher boss of his and bring him back to the US. And then at the same time, he's being pursued by the mother's henchmen and the police. So, you know, one comment I would say is in this particular role, I'm wondering if Clint is too old to play this particular character. It's more a, for me, I thought it would be more like someone in their 60s would play this role. You're still kind of physically active. I mean, a lot of scenes, Clint's kind of hobbling around, which is fine, that's his age, but for this role to be more believable, I think it would be someone um, a little bit younger. So I just, you know, for that particular role, I don't think a nine-year-old is cr the correct fit for this role. Also, you see him riding the horse, you're like, get off the horse, don't you remember Christopher Reeves? You know, uh, you're like, no, that's a bad idea, bad idea, you know, but it's kind of impressive he's still riding a horse, kind of a, you know, throwback to when he was in the 60s and he played all those spaghetti westerns. I mean, all those great Sergio Leone films in the 60s, 70s. Um, it's also like kind of interesting how this old guy is gonna show up in Mexico and convince this really young kid to go with him sight unseen to go see his old man who he hasn't seen since he's eight and he's like 14, 15 or something. So that's kind of an interesting story of, you know, him slowly talking to uh, Rafo and convincing him to come with him. And it's also this weird part where you like this 90 year old guy's being seductive to younger women. You're like, yeah, if you're a Hollywood star, that would totally make sense. I mean, you can see Brad Pitt getting 20 year olds all the time and he's in his fifties, right? So Clint needs to be in his 90s. He'd probably be 30, 40 year olds maybe because he's got that name recognition, right? Great director, longtime actor. That makes sense, right? But for a broken cowboy, I don't think you'd track anyone but someone else your own age. I don't think you'd see a broken old cowboy being able to seduce like a 30 year old woman who is Rafa's mother or the barkeep who's also maybe in her 50s. So that's just a little bit of a stretch, I think. I mean, not impossible, but it just seems like you'd have to be someone famous. Like Gerhard Richard's a famous painter and it makes sense that he has a much younger wife, but he makes millions of dollars per painting. So the fact that he has a, a wife in the late 30s, it makes sense because he has that star power, he has the earning power, and a broken cowboy has none of that. <laughs> it's kind of a fun way to get away from the law and the pursuing gang by they constantly are switching cars, stealing different cars, and Rafa kind of puts a skill together stealing cars, so that's kind of a fun thing. I think they should have shot it with Rafa actually like showing the wires um, starting the car, and they kind of cut that, they kind of get inside the car, the Rafa pops in and all of a sudden the Clint's driving and it's like, they, I think they cut a little bit out of there too much. I mean, it's really cool too when they arrive to this small town and you know, they're on the run and they run into this bar and this bar owner kind of protects them and puts the clothes sign up right when the cops show up and kind of chews them out. And it's really interesting because it's shot, is shot in Spanish and no subtitles. And then later the kid kind of translates it back. And it was fun because I know Spanish, so I just watched them. Oh, this is pretty interesting. How are they gonna show it to the English crowd? And so you get the real feel of how you would be an American lost in Mexico and not know the language. So that's kind of a fun twist, I think, to do that. Cause normally they always do subtitles and they do use subtitles when they don't want to translate, but they have a couple parts where, you know, the young kid translates it for Clint Eastwood. And this is a really common experience for uh, Mexicans when they go to Amer America. Their kids end up being the translators for the grandparents and the parents. <laughs> the parents don't really learn that much English, so the kid is always translating for the parents. So this is the reverse where Clint Eastwood's, you know, getting the translation from this young kid. So you always have that with kind of second generation or first generation immigrants. 
Yeah, I think, you know, hats off to Clint Eastwood for still being an actor and still being an active director. It's super impressive. You know, a lot of, you know, fellow actors of his same age kind of dropped off earlier and they really haven't acted for ever since the 60s. I mean, when was the last time you saw Charles Bronson or <laughs> Ralph Dun Dolph Rollin who fought Rocky? I mean, those people just disappeared off the face of the map, right? Especially like Charles Bronson. He was at the same, he was as famous as Clint Eastwood back in the 60s, but... I don't remember him in anything after the 80s. So, you know, the fact that Clint just kind of keeps pushing, 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 and really gets these stories created and pulled together and get the team together and gets the funding for this and then produces these film. It's just super impressive and, you know, hats off. Uh, especially when you look at someone say like a Quentin Tarantino and he's like, oh, I did nine films. My 10th one's gonna be the last. You're like, dude, you should be just keep going until you're freaking dead. I mean, who knows what's gonna be a masterpiece. Maybe you make some crap films, but I don't know, it's not the end of the day if you make some crap films, people will just will know they're crap and they'll, they won't watch them. So it's just kind of a shame to say like, I'm only gonna do 10 films just to limit the number of films that are great and then not have any bad films. And you're like, eh, everyone has a bad film or two. I mean, Death Proof wasn't that strong and there was flaws in the last movie as well. So I'm, I don't know, it's just, just kind of a silly attitude. I think Clint takes the right attitude as far as just kick ass, get shit done, do as many films as possible. You're only on this planet once, so just, put in the work ethic, you know? And you know, that's just kind of lost in the younger generation where like, I just want to make quality work and I don't want to make too much, I might break a fingernail. <laughs> like, dude, you make bad film, you make a bad film, whatever. I mean, you have the chance to make a film, it's just super impressive, right? So all these directors that are like, oh, I don't want to make more films like Lucas, like, oh, I'm tired of Star Wars. Like, dude, man up and do it, man. You're 80, like, just crank out. You got 10 more years to get to Clint Eastwood's level, right? So it's kind of funny in that way. But then you see other directors like say, Martin Scorsese, he did, what was it, The Irishman? I turned it off after 15 minutes. I was like, oh, this is just not watchable for me because nothing was happening in the first 15 minutes. I mean, it's probably great later, but it was just like really slow rolling. And I was like, oh my God, you're putting me to sleep. And, you know, rolling back with the age effects on De Niro, it's just kind of weird. I mean, De Niro's a great actor, but to de-age him is just kind of strange. But you can do that nowadays. So that you're probably gonna see a lot of these actors that are in their 60s, 70s just they're gonna do an age effect and have them act as if they're younger, which doesn't make any sense because they physically can't do the younger parts. So then it doesn't, you know, it's just an old guy with a weird face, right? So <laughs> it's like Hollywood thinks you put on Botox and you fixed everything. Like, no, you just look like a weird freaking person that doesn't look like young and they don't look old. There's like some weird effect, you know, like you just see like, for example, they do this Nicole Kidman on all these film introductions and you can see like she's Botox the hell out of her head so it doesn't move. So you're like, uh, yeah, you don't look like you're young any, you don't look old with wrinkles, but now you don't have any acting capability because you ruined your freaking spec. <laughs> your facial expression, you have to see the, the thing frown and everything and you have to see it go up and down and like that's natural to have wrinkles when you do this, you know? And it'd be like, they're doing that and they're like, uh, I can't act anymore because my face is solid. <laughs> But you know, people live in Hollywood, they have no idea about the real world and how bad it looks when you do Botox. But being a woman, I can understand you wanna keep those parts and pretend you're 20 or 30 still, but it's just a reality. You're not, you know, and you're gonna get different roles. And unfortunately, a lot of films, they only film women up to about their 30s, at least what they look like 30s. So they might be able to play their 50 but and pretend they're 30, but that's all you can do, right? And then they jump immediately to the grandma role. So it's just this weird thing in Hollywood, it's like, young woman romantic rom-com and then all of a sudden boom you jump to grandma and you're like well, what happened to the roles in between right because <laughs> there's roles in between right especially married women and um, older women that are married with kids and i don't know there's just potential out there i think to do other roles with women but you know people want to see women of a certain age so i don't know that's another quandary to fix with hollywood but again there's not much money behind it i think with, when you get to a certain age so that's why they don't shoot them but yeah hats off to clint for shooting the film i don't know if he should have acted in it because this the particular character he played just doesn't seem believable for a 90 year old it looks believable maybe for a mid 60s you know but mid 90s it just kind of like i don't know it's like hats off for acting but then it, it just doesn't seem believable for that particular role for that character obviously he can act but it just doesn't seem believable at that age but um, anyway it's kind of a fun watch film I mean, if you like to subscribe you can subscribe below and i'll see you in the next movie review thanks for watching guys